Whoa there, Space Cowboy. Brokeback Bebop is a podcast with explicit content intended only for mature bounty hunters. Listener discretion is advised. Listen to all 40 steamy sessions of the show right now by supporting Brokeback Bebop at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay. Three, two, one, ball gag. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Hi, everybody in, in the Cosmos and the Wandas out there. Welcome. We're back for another week here on, you know it, Brokeback Bebop. We're here. We're still cruising through the galaxy here to talk about another live action episode of the 2021 Cowboy Bebop Netflix series. Hi, Steven. How you doing over there? Hi. We don't introduce ourselves in this one, do we? I mean, we can't. We. I mean, I don't. I was kind of introducing you by saying your name casually. You know, you can be, uh, you can be casual about it. Well, Don't have to and, bring it up. And all I'm the time. a tall glass of creamy chocolate milk. That was my intro. I actually wrote one this time. <laughs> Moments before hitting record, I had both arms around Steven as he's against a brick wall and said, <laughs> Well, Steven, you are black <laughs> and you are male. <laughs> That's how Did I you put your, you know, I could see that. That'd be a great Halloween costume for us, Zach. Me as Jet Black and you as <laughs> The Woodcock. old lady with squished up boobs yeah. who is racist. And You've got red hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That was certainly a moment from this series that I had seen before and cringed at real hard out of context. And it's no better in context. Maybe worse. There's not much context more to it. Mm-hmm. It is what you think it is. Well, hi everybody. I'm glad you've joined us, and we're gonna have some fun today. What a, ooh, what a, what a silly but somehow humorless episode of television we just watched together. So I'm I'm gonna hearken back to something at some point during this, Zach. What do you mean? And just remind you of like a direct comparison, and. Why can't you just say I'm it? I'm building anticipation. We're small talking. We're small talking, Zach. I'm not going to okay. talk shop yet. Okay. We just got in the damn... We just laid in the bed, and yeah. you want me to go straight for your we ass? Just Absolutely got in the not, Jeep. Zach. The cover's not off yet. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, come on. How you doing, buddy? What's What you been watching? <laughs> Um, I'm doing great. What I We talked about... I'm watching a current era Family Guy is what mm-hmm. I'm watching. Um, because it's one of the few shows that I still watch that I know Lil, uh, my significant other Lil does not give a fuck if I watch without mm-hmm. them. So that's what I was watching. You today. gotta have those. While I ate like my cereal and drank my coffee, it's a decent enough show for that. Yeah. Do you know why there weren't new episodes this week? Why would I know that? I don't know. You know about nightly TV lineups. There was no well, new Bob's Burgers or Family Guy this week. But was there a new Simpsons and The Great North? I don't watch The Great North, and I did watch Simpsons last week, but I haven't watched Simpsons in years. So um, I don't the Great think North so. is really good. It's from the same people as Bob's Burgers. Oh. And it's got a really great voice cast, and it's I really like good. That. I'll give it a go. It's really good. It's about like a family that lives in Alaska. Oh, nice. It's really good. I would recommend it. Like, well, fully recommend it. Uh, I don't know. Those shows that air like 22 episodes a season will take off weird weeks i don't know is it a holiday it's a week after a it's holiday. a week after this halloween episodes. i don't know they take off yeah they take off a week at random huh, times interesting well i don't good know. To know talking shop well i've been watching a few things zach i uh-huh. finally i feel proud of myself i've watched i'm like up to date on one anime holy shit that's and you've been, I been saving those juicy tidbits to snack on at a later day haven't you? yeah it's true i've been kind of stashing up because uh, danny and i watch two shows together and then I'm watching two without her. One because it's scary and she wouldn't like it. And the other because I really like it and don't want to be behind on it. I am behind on it. But it's, I don't. It's one of those shows that yeah. you'd like to masturbate to. Yeah, exactly. And it's tough to do that with, with someone watching. But 
I want to briefly talk about some of the highlights of this season so far. Chainsaw okay. Man's still fantastic. I have it at a solid. After four episodes, I give ratings. That's when I start scoring the season, and I change it as I go based on the episodes. But I have Chainsaw Man at a solid nine right now. Animation's incredible. Story's great. It somehow pulls off a horror action comedy in a way that I don't think has been done that at nice. least I have not been exposed to in a pretty perfect way. Great story, great animation. Um, Mob Psycho 100, season three, that's airing, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. Season three of that is incredible. And it's, it's just, there's not a show that encompasses what that show does when it comes to emotional awareness under the guise of an action psychic slice of life show. It's just, it's really, really good. That's a 10 for me so far this season. And Spy Family, just as good as ever. Super cute, super funny. My Hero Academia is in one of my favorite manga arcs is being animated right now, so I'm enjoying that as well. So check out any of those shows. They're good. Nice. You would really like Spy Family. That'd be a good one for you to watch with Lil. It's it's the one that I told you is like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but if they had a kid that was a telepath and a dog that could see the future. I remember it coming out, but I've heard people talk about it. I know it's... I hear... The rumblings. I kind of know what's hit. You got your ears to the ground. There's just so much stuff to watch, and Mm -hmm. it's so hard to watch everything, so I end up watching nothing. You would really enjoy Mob Psycho 100. That might be one that that we watch for a a, a different Patreon podcast one day, like like an episode, like I'll show you. I've been going back and watching a whole lot of the Angry Video Game Nerd. Wow. I've been on some weird nostalgia kick with it that – when I have some free time, it's about all I feel like watching lately. Wow. And the old videos, like, obviously, if you've never seen them and you don't have any nostalgia for them, they'd probably not be very good. But they don't make me cringe. They hold up pretty well. And I'm nice. constantly marveling at the fun amateur filmmaking stuff he was up to back then, like, mm-hmm. at the very beginning of YouTube. He does some cool homegrown yeah. special effects and stuff, and it makes me laugh. And for a show that's all about saying the dirtiest thing possible in a Palman at at something, there's been almost nothing that is like hate speech. That's good. He does a very good job of saying shocking things that's 20, 15 years later. There's yeah. no, there's no gay jokes. There's no, it, it works really well. And I think that's, especially on YouTube. And it's, yeah, and YouTube like, was the wild fucking West for a while. Yeah. There is some stuff that could not be around today. That was like the norm on YouTube. Yeah. One of the like biggest YouTubers at a time. I don't feel comfortable saying. I was literally just thinking of that person name. right now. Are yeah, we, are we thinking of the same? Yeah, two person comedy. It rhymes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Higa <laughs> is one of the guys, right? That's his name. I I was never a big uh, <laughs> you fan can, of that. You can say it all you want, right? <laughs> say it. <laughs> YouTube was crazy. YouTube was wild. Well, let's sidestep into something that is also kind of crazy and wild. The third episode (laughs) of the live action (laughs) Cowboy Bebop. Today we're talking about an episode called Dog Star Swing. This episode was directed by Michael Cattleman, who directs five episodes of this series. But in the past, he's also directed episodes of shows like The X-Files and Gilmore Girls and Smallville. So that's pretty impressive. Ooh, I liked Smallville. It was written by Christopher Yost and Sean Cummings. We've talked about Sean Cummings before. He's the everything sucks guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christopher Yost wrote on a ton of animated series. A few of the highlights were Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Batman like in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And he's recently done some story work on The Mandalorian. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Christopher Yost. And this episode originally aired on Netflix with the entire series on November 19th, 2021. And let's uh, let's get into it. Let's do some trivia for let's Dog do it. I've, Star Swing. I've got two questions for you this week, Zach. I've got three, so I'll go first. Go for it. You go first, Zach. You've got three. Why don't you take it away? I'm thinking just for the sake of, of programming, since I have mm-hmm. three and you have two, maybe I should go first. That math checks out. How many toy stores are in Tharsis City? Ah, uh, 70. Good job. And not a goddamn one has the walking salad doll. That's pretty good. I don't think I've mentioned it on pod yet, just how many 
times live action Jet says goddamn, God it's damn. making him into a cartoon character. Mm-hmm. If you played a drinking game with it and committed to taking a shot in any episode so far, every time Jet Black says goddamn, you will <laughs> not be conscious by the theme song sequence. We should do that sometime. When is the sake on Mars good? Hmm. It's when he's talking to the guy at like the sushi car. The sushi? <laughs> when it rains? Only when it rains. Ha <laughs> Nice. Job. Next for you, how much does Jet pay Black Market Santa for the doll? Oh, that's a whopping 35K. Shelled out those Wu Longs. How long have Spike and Jet been working together? Three years. Three years, yeah. Because this show doesn't make you wonder a thing about anyone. They'll no, tell it you doesn't. It'll tell you every you've little even thing. even thought about it. Yeah. It explains every joke. One more question for you. What word is spelled out in neon letters while Spike and Hakeem fight? Ah, you mean the highest quality live action shot you'll ever see in your life, Zach. The, the poetic justice of an Asian man and a black man? Fighting on top of a brothel with the word porn spelled out (laughs) in neon lights behind them. That's art, Zach. That is cinema. And that's my last question. (laughs) That's what turned this from a show to a program. Uh, Well, uh, (laughs) with with speaking of pornography, it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show. It's time for the sexiest part of the pod. (laughs) Zach's over there in his skibbies with nothing but thigh high boots on. <laughs> Everyone, uh, get yourself tied up and start <laughs> yapping like a little doggy. You know what time it is. It's time to find out Did Zach comprehend the episode this week? <laughs> You know, Zach, I know that you, you've you booped a couple bottoms in your day. Uh, how are you feeling this week? This episode hit close to home for you. Pass. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still in Zach's phone as hooned. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a picture of a little doggy. But that's for unrelated reasons. We've talked enough pup play on our... Between our two podcasts. That <laughs> too much. Far too We're much. We're well-versed. We know our stuff. That was our MVP. <laughs> once, of, once Upon a Baby. Or what's My Inner Baby? Is that what it's called? Different podcast. But yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Yeah, that uh, that should be uh, My inner our baby. MVP of, of, yeah. the, of the season. <laughs> Zach, you're going to have 20 seconds yeah. to convey to me the inner workings of... What we just watched, what mm-hmm. what the people at home are, are going to watch alongside this uh-huh. second by second. Hope they press play at the beginning. How are you feeling? You ready? Yeah, I feel great. Okay. On go. Uh-huh. Three, two, one, go. It's a very special NBC's TGI Friday as down on his luck father Jet hasn't been around his daughter in seven years and all she wants for her birthday is a little baby doll and he's going to get it in any cost no matter what stumbles along his way. Meanwhile, they resurrect the classic villain Hakeem and do no- they don't know what they want to do with them so we're going to skip that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you got about 40%. I thought I was just going to do the jet thing. I so did too. That was I was, you had like three seconds and you got the Hakeem's existence in there. That's a, a D plus. That's which, fine. That was speaking just Speaking of D plus, let's talk about this episode. Okay, I've watched this episode twice now. And Steven, you said before we started recording that there are a few things you like about it. I am trying to go in as optimistic as possible with this show, and I think I have been the first two episodes. But I think that this episode is just terrible. <laughs> if I was watching the show and I didn't have the affection for the characters and the world and mm-hmm. the music that I have from watching the original, I would not keep watching past this episode. Yeah, I, I understand that. Easy. I'd it. be like, oh, there's a lot I don't of know moments. who this show is for, but it's not for me. Pass. Now, luckily, I've, I won't – we'll talk about it next week. I, mm-hmm. I've seen past this episode, and I do think past this episode, I don't quite feel the same way. I'm, I'm given reasons mm-hmm. to maybe keep watching. But if I was watching this with no reason to keep watching, I think this would be where I tap out. 
Yeah, it's not great. My reasons for liking this episode do not have anything to do with the quality of the episode, unfortunately. Yeah, and I can see that. I can see why someone would have a lot of fun uh, uh, with this episode. Mm -hmm. A term that you've brought up a lot is campy. And sure, this is an episode that's very much trying to be campy. However, I just think the show doesn't know what it, it wants its tone to be. Yeah. So there are a lot of visuals that are really campy Mm -hmm. um we've got a bunch of cute doggies lined up with a gun pointing at them (laughs) uh we've got like a fully naked eyes sewn shut slave people (laughs) for i mean there's a lot of really campy stuff but yet no joke that the show tells is funny none of it's funny and a show that wants to be almost was funny they then explain to death so that it's not funny at all We'll I just don't understand why you would keep doing that. Like, I think if I never been to film school, never taken a class on <laughs> film or anything like that, knows that I'm you sure people show, are very don't surprised tell. to find out that we're not uh, yeah. well educated film scholars, you and I. But even I know show don't tell. Don't over explain a goddamn joke. Who was in the writer's room was like, ah, let's say the joke, but then say it like three more times. That's going to really hammer it home. Remember on Family Guy when they drag out the jokes and they're longer so they're funny? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do that here. Not only show don't tell because sometimes things that aren't the best can get away with just telling us because they have no other way to do it. Mm -hmm. What is really bad here is that they have built no intrigue. Yeah. There's nothing that we don't already know about these characters, and we had no time to get to know them and wonder who are these people, why are they the way that they are. They've just had them explain it to each other. I want to harken back now to remind you about the episode that this episode is based on. Is this what you teased earlier? Yeah, Stray Dog Strut. I want to remind you what Stray Dog Strut I had forgotten. Mm -hmm. Uh, This episode has no relation to Stray Dog Strut. Well, I want to remind you, because Stray Dog Strut is the, I think, second episode of okay. Cowboy Bebop, right? This is the third episode of live-action Cowboy Bebop. Is that true? Is it the second episode? Yeah, second you're right. Or second or yeah. third. Because it's pre fay So it's before mm. Faye. Faye's not in this episode at all. They introduced her in the first one, and then, like, bye for two episodes. Uh-huh. Which, true. Whatever. Make your choices. She'll be back next week. Yeah. What that episode accomplishes, okay? We have... A little bit of teaser into Spike's life as a syndicate member because Mm -hmm. we meet... Fearless! (laughs) (laughs) We get the introduction of Ayn and explanation that he's like a genius dog. Like They Uh they get him. There's like a bounty. Hakim's an actual cool villain. We we got no genius dog. No genius dog in this one. Well, he is a genius dog. He broke out of his own electronic safe. We'll talk more about that. They have shown that Ayn is widely in his like scrappy shore but all the intrigue that we get for ein is that like dogs are really rare here and they're worth a lot of money and rich people treat well, them but like on his children. collar it has the medical company you're right and sure maybe they'll go into it but i just didn't feel like we got the sense that ein is as special as he is here no not at all there is no like cunning move by ein ein literally is like people and then goes back to where he was so that they walk to the guy whereas in the animated one ein like jumps on a garbage truck and off sure. he like does a daring escape the episode's called stray dog strut and this isn't really not no the original is this one's mm-hmm. called star dog star, star shine swing. it's called dog star <laughs> swing <laughs> they just pick three fucking words yeah it's not even about that it, it wants no. to be about the Hakim villain. First and foremost, as I mentioned in my recap, this episode is about Jet trying to get this doll for his daughter. That mm-hmm. is the through line of this episode. Is that the episode. A plot? It, I think it does so. go from the beginning to the end. It does. It's the, the Hakim thing is just so they can get the money that Jet needs to get his daughter the doll, which mm-hmm. leads them to the dogs, which leads them to Ion. I think it's really unfortunate that Hakim is a really, I don't know if iconic's the right word, but in a certain sense, an iconic villain. He's a cool villain, yeah. A cool villain. And I think this episode has no idea what they want to do with him other than knowing that he's like how they want to get from one point to another with something like Ayn. I just feel like it's a really missed opportunity. I don't think anything cool from these plot lines in the original show was represented here. No. There's two plot points I want to talk about. Please. That I think are hilarious. One, I do want to bring before those two. 
<laughs> preface you're the all joke about like where mapping out your stuff today i like it spike was like well you know you can always sell your arm and he's like i could shove it up your ass when spike was like it would feel really good but would it fix anything i did think that was a funny joke i guess i do want to give it credit for that one i'm still not joke. on board with jet and spike because there's the scene later on I don't even remember what they're saying, but there's a scene when they're like quipping back and forth with each other. Mm -hmm. And I fucking hate them because I don't feel <laughs> like the, oh, these they're guys love each OTP. other, but they're rough and tumble and they're they're joking around. They come off exactly like that married couple that hates each other yeah. and jokes about it all the time. And mm -hmm. everyone at Scrabble Night is super uncomfortable to they're have like, been there. <laughs> I'm going to hit you when we get home. It's not uh, funny. Well, it's would. like, oh my yeah. God, shut up. So the, the storyline this episode that I think is the worst part of it, like uh -huh. the, the thing that's just so stupid, is Got it. Spike in his head comparing his situation with Vicious to Jet's with his ex-partner who's stooping his wife. Well, Yes, I mean, do they have a former comrade that's banging their broad? Sure. But very, very different scenario. Have you ever thought about putting a bullet in them? Like, no, because me and my wife got divorced and she got married. Like, your dude actually did I'm allowed to hate in this guy and not kill him. <laughs> like, you should kill your guy, Spike. <laughs> that makes me think of kind of a bigger point, a problem that I'm having with this show that is kind of my cross to bear. It's not everybody else's. Seeing this show in live action, it really takes away the coolness of just, like, shooting everyone that is seen and them falling down yeah. dead. It, it, I don't know exactly how to voice it, and I'm not totally against violent cinema or... There's just no weight to, like, Hoo! falls down blood well, dead. here's what I'm going to pose to you, Zach. I don't think yeah, it's sure. an issue with the concept or the medium. I think sure. it's how poorly it's done. Have you ever seen the movie Watchmen? I actually haven't. No. Well, the beginning of that movie is really loud, really heavy, and a character basically gets shot, kicked through a window, whatever. And those gunshots feel heavy. If you sure. watch certain movies, the gun you feel the weight. The Joker is as much of that's an incel breeding whatever. Say which it's one like this movie. is what happens when you shoot off a gun at someone in a space. Yeah, this is that how movie it, has some the of the most realistic weighted gunshots, like people getting shot that I've seen in a movie ever. This show is not that, <laughs> and the an which is embarrassing because normally the issue with animated people getting shot is you don't feel the weight. It's just drawing boom, 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 boom splatter, splatter of blood. Cowboy Bebop, you feel the weight of every single gunshot in the anime, and in this show, it's a joke. Yeah. Uh, that brings up specifically the moment at the end, and I think th there's no need to, like, story analyze the ins and outs of the through line of this episode we'll talk about the things that stood out to us in the end spike has his like okay two things spike has his like heisenberg moment when he's trying to shoot gus from the top of the yeah. parking garage the cgi bullet taking forever <laughs> to get to vicious and vicious just looking at dead in his eyes and then because it's a cgi bullet it like for that bullet to have just grazed his face it well, the bullet didn't like... graze his face. The bullet got stuck in the window. It was a piece of glass that oh, broke off and grazed okay. his face. Okay. I thought the way I saw it. Because that's why like, he shot. Because it was like he that knew the that it was bulletproof right. glass. Um, the other thing that I thought was it's one of the two <laughs> most iconic window smashing moments in a TV series. Of course, second <laughs> being Mercedes smashing Kurt's window in an early of episode of Glee. That's Absolutely. All. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Shout out to Glee. <laughs> also, call back to um, whatever the hell we just – one of the superlatives where I referred mm -hmm. to uh, Matthew Morrison as Matthew Gleason. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did, and there was no batting an eye of that. No. You just got a weird laugh out of me that I saw that peak on my thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else happens this episode? Uh, Julia's – Scared, so she goes to talk to the the lady that owns the club. We've you were the best I ever had up there. No, Vicious I wasn't. Julia You're so right. Much, like everything else, it takes away any intrigue or interest in these characters and just turns them into like jokes. Like even in the original show, you never find out exactly like a hundred percent of the story. That's and why I know was everything already. Like, iffy on the idea of if 
Julia and Vicious were actually romantically involved with yeah. each other because it, it is kept kind of vague. You don't it is. see everything. And here it's like, no, they're dating. And Julia like, does oh, love married. him and he's happy. Oh. And, and But also she's trying to get away. I don't know. It It's really upsetting because I think a, a live action Cowboy Bebop could work. And yeah. in it, it's all the the wrong people did it. Whoever was overseeing the story and the writing. And unfortunately, the cast gets a lot of blowback for it, but it's not their fault. No. I think they're just given... Not a lot to work with. Yeah. I'm being slowly won over by John Cho as Spike, mm-hmm. but I'm getting, obviously, different things out of his Spike than I am out of the original. Yeah. But I'm starting to kind of like that spike a little bit. There were so many cringy moments in this episode, and we're barely scratching Woodcock the surface. Is bad. Woodcock, Woodcock is, is bad really, scene. really bad. It went on for three times longer than it should have, and it made me uncomfortable. I got secondhand, I don't know if it was secondhand embarrassment, secondhand, like, I don't know what it was, but that scene does not sit well in my body. Like, I, I awkward laugh at it. But it, it it doesn't it's not good behavior. It's bad racially insensitive writing, right? She says the word black referring to him like six times. She's like, "Well, ooh, look at this chocolate milk. Ooh, look at this jet. Ooh, black. Mm. It mm. really fetishizes Jet mm-hmm. being black, which of course everyone knows he is one hundred percent white. <laughs> no. it, it really fetishizes his race. And then after she leaves, Spike's like, I like her. Yeah. Even worse, Zach, while she's there, out loud, he's like, favorite person ever. And then Jet and her continue to have a conversation like he's not (laughs) there. Spike Spiegel, a racist confirmed. (laughs) That was a bad moment. And it doesn't – she's just – one of the several connects that Jet has on his way to getting a black market doll. Her character <laughs> did not need to be she there. She has nothing to do with the doll. That's the worst part. She gets them the raw footage of Hakeem's right, bank right, heist that right, tells right. them nothing. Not important. She didn't they did, to oh, there. his wrist. Oh, my God. They could have seen that in the footage they already had. It feels – this Enhanced. episode is – Really, really aimless. The The title card comes literally halfway through the episode. It feels like this episode is trying to be like three different episodes and none of them are satisfying. Did you know that the Woodcock scene is not the only black dick joke in the episode, Zach? What are you talking about? There's another there one. was when, black dick. I saw it. <laughs> they're in the fight between Hakeem and Spike uh-huh. when, when Hakeem has a really long pull and then Spike pulls out the little one and is like, oh, man. And then oh, like, throws notice. it at him. <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh man his is longer as we're starting to, i'm starting to grasp to have an, this was a silly episode yeah i would really love to have like gotten a group of friends together and been like, <laughs> we're gonna watch this today and then i'm gonna write down a couple of the things that you say afterwards for mm-hmm. my thing i should have done that because this was just really silly yeah. and I thought it was pretty bad. I said to Steven, I think this is one of the worst episodes of television I've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. It's just aimless. It's not funny when it's trying to be – it's trying to be, like, hip and edgy with its, like, sexual stuff yeah. in the way that the animated Cowboy Bebop was for its time. And it just comes off, like, for as – out there it's trying to look it just looks really i don't know like edgeless for something i know they're like okay what's a what's a like really edgy kinky thing and they were like spanking (laughs) this one time i met this girl she slapped my bottom i was into it i was into it let's put that in there i bet that's (laughs) something people haven't experienced uh, as we wrap this up, as we look, just go watch this. Form an opinion for yourself. I don't think there's much. This is one of those episodes that I'm watching it, and we're getting ready to record a podcast about it. And unfortunately, I'm like, what are we doing here? Why are we doing this? <laughs> What's just this episode. I don't always. I have never felt that way. About I don't want to be here this. anymore. <laughs> the and chin exactly. kills, Zach. The chin, the chin kills. This episode is all chin, <laughs> and, and it, it kills. fucking kills. It really <laughs> does kill. Uh, before we get into our captain of the bebop and get out of here to greener pastures next week with a better episode, yeah. Let's talk about. There's two kinds of people in this world, and I want to know which are you. Are you a Betty Boop or are you are a Betty Bottoms? You know, I think. I want to check out Betty Boop. 
Betty Bottoms seems like like the place that I'd be a little too scared to go. Right. I may enjoy it, but I think that I'd have to have someone help me get in the door. Oh, you're in luck because I've got <laughs> I've got this punch card with me from Betty Bottoms and <gasps> Every five probing. You play in I Betty Bottom to... Bingo, and one of the one of the squares is bring a friend. Every five probings, I get to bring a friend free. Oh, so sweet. you can be my extra probing if you'd like. I'd love. We can. We can, can we hold hands during wear can we be little in the same ears chamber and be the true hoons we know we are. <laughs> Who's your arf, captain arf. of the Bebop this week? The silly episode. Who was um, it? It's hard to reward bad I don't have it written it? down because I didn't want to diminish her character, but what was the name of the Dom? Was it Natasha, Natalia? I could not tell you, but okay. I'm just going to say Hakim's Dom. I think she was outstandingly horrible in her yes, performance in this absolutely. episode. Absolutely. Well, it was between her and Woodcock for me, because I'm well, for absolutely me... not giving it to Spike or Jet. <laughs> this week uh, well, absolutely not <laughs> for me this week my captain will be going to little walking sally oh <laughs> that girl knows how to take a beating <laughs> and still be looking fly as hell little walking fly sally hell. those legs go you. all the way up anything you want to say about this episode as we wrap it up before we before uh, i'm we excited it. to watch next week ein is so cute the dog that they cast for Ayn, fucking adorable. It's hard to miss what a with perfect a corgi. corgi. You put a corgi on the screen, I'm going to smile. That's nice. Yeah. There were a when lot of cute like, dogs. he's like coming out of a little box. Yeah, those are cute a dogs. A lot of cute dogs, but the scene when he's like, I'm going to shoot fu- you puppies. Uh, don't look at me! Like, is it supposed to be funny? Is it? I don't know. He hadn't thought that through. Uh-uh. I'm going to take the dogs. I'm going to fucking shoot them. Yeah, Jesus. I We're at the end of the podcast. <laughs> so I, just, I have so much. Literally, the Hakim ha- plot was so unnecessary. Hakim was such a cool villain in the original, and he's such a limp dick piece of shit in this that it can't even kill a fucking dog. Hand me the gun, <laughs> bitch. I'll do it for some good storytelling. Come on, sell him. I was gonna kill him. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Wouldn't taking the dogs be enough? They don't have the dogs anymore. I think maybe I just need to expect something different out of this show. Uh Uh-huh. Take a deep breath, let it all wash over me, and just have a good time. I think that's Mm -hmm. what I got to do. So next week, let's try to do that, okay? I like it. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next time. Arf, arf, arf. Don't murder any dogs. Sell them. (laughs) That's better. Yeah. Fight them. Sell them. Don't kill them. (laughs) Fight them. for listening support this show and our podcast network at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast where starting at five dollars a month you can get immediate access to all 40 outrageous sessions of broke back bebop see you next time space cowboy Let's go!